Now we're lucky enough we're going to hear from our platinum sponsor, um, Maureen Lewis from the National Mental Health Commission. Thank you. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here at the eighth national and sorry annual. This is a mouthful. This one, if I get past this, I'll be fine. Annual National Borderline Personality Disorders Conference. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the Turrbal people, the traditional owners of the Brisbane region, and pay my respect to elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge lived experience of people with mental ill health, their families, carers and support people. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Rita Brown and the Foundation for bringing us all together today. I commend the work the Foundation is doing to elevate the conversation of BPD amongst health professionals, service providers and for highlighting the voice of those with lived experience and their families and friends. It's an honour for me to be here, to be able to hear from experts, including consumers and carers and health professionals, and to acknowledge the importance of effective supports for those living with BPD. We know there is inequity of services across Australia, and in many cases this is due to stigma and discrimination faced within the system. In thinking about today's conference, I look back to my days as a young student nurse in one of Western Australia's biggest mental health hospitals. And for those of you from WA, any WA people here? So Greylands Hospital, that's why I started my training. And that's where I first became familiar with the term personality disorder. I couldn't understand while those with this diagnosis, there was further stigma and discrimination in an already stigmatised healthcare system. I also recall my time in Perth's psychiatric emergency team, where many of our regular callers on the helpline were the people we visited in the community in crisis. And they all, not all, a lot of them had a diagnosis of personality disorder. All we could do was keep people safe until the next time, and the next time, and the next time. And sadly for some, there was no next time. Then, in later years, in my role as Director of Acute Child and Adolescent Mental Health in Western Australia, um, there was many young people in our inpatient unit who filled the only 12 beds in Western Australia for, for people with this diagnosis. Many of them spent months in care due to lack of other specialised services in the community. And we would do little more than to keep them safe. We knew hospital wasn't conducive to their recovery, but there was nowhere else to go. We heard of services such as Spectrum and Project Air in the East, but unless families had the finance to support treatment, travel and be away from home in their workplaces, this care wasn't an option for most. I think about this today in my role at the Commission, and I wonder how much of this has changed. I would imagine, despite the best intentions from many, in some places perhaps not much. So when the Commission was approached 18 months ago by the Foundation, we knew we had to do what we could to get the spotlight on BPD. We felt the Commission was well placed to play a lead role by acting as a catalyst for change. This is one of the Commission's key roles alongside our monitoring and reporting in the mental health and suicide prevention system. We made a commitment to try and assist with improving the lives for those with borderline personality by funding a number of projects in the area. One project recently completed by SANE Australia conducted a literature review and an environmental scan around the availability of services in Australia for people living with personality disorder. They also looked at qualitative research with consumers and carers and to hear their experiences of accessing services. Overall, the work found that the current mental health system in Australia is not meeting the needs of Australians living with personality disorder and that there are few free or low cost specialist services and many involving long wait lists. This wasn't a surprise. The work also found that while many people living with personality disorders do access services, the level of care is often inadequate. This will not be news for many of you here today. 
The work by SAIN will be released shortly and we will be discuss it will be discussed later in a presentation. I believe Elise is here from SAIN and she'll be running you through what that particular project was. Hi, Elise. We need to do better in supporting people living with BPD as well as their families and friends who also experience challenges such as their own mental ill health and experiences of stigma. The Commission is dedicated to continuing to work more towards an effective mental health system for all and to listening to the voice of people with lived experience. Our vision is for all people in Australia to lead contributing lives in socially and economically thriving communities. As a sponsor of this conference, the Commission looks forward to the awareness of BPD growing and that it gets the recognition it deserves and to have specialised services resourced to provide the appropriate care at the right time and improve the outcomes of the lives for everyone with this disorder. The Commission will continue to put the spotlight on this and work with you to do what we can to make sure it's a priority on everyone's agenda. Thank you and I hope you enjoy your time at the conference. <laughs>